this theme they are focusing more. In fact, last year there was a case study, um, question nine, I guess, and that case study was about a civil servant Rasika who faced a lot of uh, pressure in her professional life and was not able to balance the work and uh, personal life and professional life. So this theme it is uh, being asked from two years. Now, first of all, when we talk about uh, when we talk about the women in the public services, so their number has increased over the last few years. Now, this data might not be there with you in the examination. Okay, but just to give you an insight, according to Trivedi Center for Political Data, when we talk about the proportion of women officers recruited to the IS, it was just 5% earlier. Now, it reached to 15% in 1970s, 25% to 2000 and 27% to 2020. So, proportion of women in public service, civil services, particularly IAS, has been increasing. Okay. Now, there are multiple things that are there. Number one, their representation in civil services is increasing. In fact, government is prioritizing women in public life and that you can see with uh, through the clarion call that is being given by government. They are all the time talking about women-centric, women-led growth and development. Even Nari Shakti is the word that they have used multiple number of times. Now, this is some basic fodder material that uh, should be there in your mind when you will be approaching this particular answer. So, what we can say? We can say, we can start the introduction. We can start the introduction by this. That government, government over the past few years, government over the past few years have prioritized, have prioritized women set, women led, women led model of development. Government has prioritized Nari Shakti, and in such capacity, in such capacity, women are being prioritized in the public service, and consequently, consequently, their number in public service is steadily increasing. Consequently, their number in public service is steadily increasing. Okay, now we'll go to the question. Question says examine the gender specific challenges faced by public servant and suggest suitable measures. And suggest a suitable measures. So challenges that they are facing and what are the measures? What are the measures? Okay. So as the challenges are concerned, the so first challenge that they face is that often work-life balance becomes a problem. Now, when we talk about women, why work-life balance is a big problem for women but not for men? It is because women, they are believed as the backbone of care work. Women, because of the gender role that are existing in the society, it is believed that it is the women's responsibility to do the domestic work. So, women have been given more onus of domestic responsibilities. And because of that, often they are not able to balance it. Then there is a gender bias. Then there is a sense of gender bias even in the public services. Often there are... A lot of type of tasks, lot of type of deputations, lot of type of assignments in which it is believed that men can perform better. Okay, and such kind of postings are specifically given to men. Then there is a lack of representation of women in higher positions. Okay, then culture and social constraints are there, particularly when women are dealing uh, certain areas which are not that much developed, where the conservative people, uh, population, backward population is there, their women are not given the lead roles. So, cultural and social constraints are there which restrict the women in such kind of profiles. Stereotyping of role still exists. Now, what can be the measures? What can be the measures? So, measures can be to strengthen the institutional support so that the institution's system promotes women and breaks these gender stereotypes. Gender sensitization and bias elimination program in community and large as well as within the administration. Okay. And encourage mentorship and network. So, within the public administration, civil services, fine, women's leadership forum can be established. Okay. Then there is one question, and it was a very expected kind of a question Mission Karm Yogi. So, question reads Mission Karm Yogi aims for maintaining a very high standard of conduct and behavior to ensure efficiency for serving citizens and in turn developing oneself. How will this scheme empower the civil servants in enhancing productive efficiency and delivering the services at grassroots level? So, again, Karm Yogi also, we have discussed it may, at many places in our classes. So, we discussed the entire mission Karm Yogi, components of Karm Yogi. 
हाउ कर्मयोगी नाउ कर्मयोगी इज रोल एट मेनी प्लेसेस वी हैव डिस्कस फॉर एग्जांपल इन वर्क कल्चर वी डिस्कस अबाउट मिशन कर्मयोगी ओके वेज टू इंप्रूव वर्क कल्चर इन ब्यूरोक्रेसी वी डिस्कस अबाउट मिशन कर्मयोगी वी डिस्कस मिशन कर्मयोगी टू बिल्ड द सुटेबल एटीट्यूड इन सिविल सर्वेंट देर वी डिस्कस मिशन कर्मयोगी फाइन वी डिस्कस द रोल ऑफ कर्मयोगी इन डेवलपिंग ई आई इन सिविल सर्वेंट ओके देर वी डिस्कस द कर्मयोगी ओके Fine. So we discussed karma yogi at multiple places. Now, first of all, what we can do? We can, in introduction, just talk about the mission karma yogi. We can give a brief background. We can give a brief understanding on mission karma yogi. So, mission karma yogi, what it aims to do? It aims to bring a structural transformation in the bureaucracy. It aims to create a service-led bureaucracy. It aims to make that bureaucracy moves from rule-based uh, rule-based order to the role-based order. So, Mission Karma Yogi, okay, capacity building program for civil servants were launched by the government of India to transform and to inculcate the capacity building framework for civil servants. It aims to enhance their efficiency, accountability, and ethical conduct. Now, how Mission Karma Yogi, how Mission Karma Yogi will empower civil servants? Empower civil servants, okay. Why? Question says, how will this scheme empower the civil servant? to enhance their productive efficiency and for delivering the services at grassroots level now uh, in this particular question you are not required to write too much on the components but components are to be used while explaining your points i hope you are understanding you need not to explain components just for the sake of components because question is not only on karma yogi question says that how karma yogi will help civil servants so we will bring the components of mission karma yogi but we will bring it to showcase that how they will help in capacity enhancement let's see this thing so so when we talk about mission karma yogi within mission karma yogi there are the personalized training programs that are there there are personalized training programs that are there even there are capacity building commissions that are there under the mission karma yogi so personalized training program capacity building programs what they will do they will enhance the competency of the civil servants to deal with the specific challenges to deal with the specific challenges and by that they will be able to deliver the services to the grassroots okay this line will add in all the points then digital tools platforms such as ibot platform it will help civil servants to gain the cutting edge technologies tools they will be able to get the frameworks to go for uh, data based decision making and by that effective delivery of public services at a grassroots level then mission karma yogi enable civil servants to understand better understand local issues and to adopt a context specific solutions so what will happen custom tailored approach one size fit all will be avoided custom tailored approach will be there which will can which can help them in better delivery of goods and services then citizen centric approach has been prioritized okay so the citizen centric approach will make civil servants more empathetic responsive and effective and civil servants who are empathetic responsive and effective can better deliver can better connect with the public at the grassroots then mission will foster an innovative mindset and by this innovative mindset civil servants can adopt new ideas best practices in fact there are dedicated training modules and these dedicated training modules can be used to provide them specific skill sets these dedicated training modules can be provided them to learn better emotional intelligence to develop better attitude to improve the work culture in their organization so these are the ways that how mission karma yogi will help them okay so all this we have already discussed in it so guys that is all about our section a okay uh, questions i hope that you have understood it and i hope you have got a much clarity if you have liked the video please tell us we'll be coming out with a part on the case studies also i hope you have enjoyed this session and you got a utility out of this session thank you so much